Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. This is Bishop Welsh Tech, and today we are looking at a cooler from Beaker. This is the Power Rock Pro 3 LX. Should you consider it? Okay then, so this is the Be Quiet Power Rock Pro 3 LX. Let's see what's actually inside the box, what accessories come with, so forth. Okay, so first of all, it does come with a, I'm assuming it has to do a warranty. This end is, yeah, that's the insulation guide. I will say that they do label everything fantastically. When it comes to Be Quiet, they label it in color. They tell you, how to actually install everything which is fantastic then you get all the mounting brackets now it does come with clips it comes with all the mounting brackets you need for amd as well as intel which is cool then you get a bit of foam and there's the cooler let me get the cooler out okay so this is the cooler beer as you can see that the fans on this side are already pre-done with the with the clips it's got two of their fans i have done reviews of these separate fans on the channel as well so there's six heat pipes does come with pre-applied thermal paste which to be honest is actually known by be quiet they've done this for a very long time okay so you get rgb both fans you've got a dual heat sink and then you've got six heat pipes now as for the specs as for the dimensions of the fans or and the radiator sorry the radiator is 139 times 124 by 155 socket compatibility with this is 1851 1700 1200 1150 1151 1155 am5 and am4 as for the maximum power capacity it is 250 watts the noise level is between uh, 14 26.5 and 34.8 that is between 50 75 and 100 percent it's quite neat it actually says does tell you that so six heat pipes the fan dimensions are 120 by 120 by 25 that that's just a generic normal fan the fan speed is 2000 rpm as high as it goes the safety current in amps is 0 0.45 the lighting is 5 volt argb uh, the airflow is in cfm which is between 61.8 and 105.1 but yeah Air pressure is 2.51 with a connector of 4-pin PWM. And this does have a lifespan of 60,000 hours. So, let's get this on the test bench. Okay, so when it comes to the overall insulation. Now, as for mounting the overall cooler, the brackets, there's two different methods. There's the normal standard mounting and then there's the offset mounting. Now... What the offset mounting will do is offset the CPU cooler more towards the CCDs, which AM5, the CCDs are down here. And then you've got the controller here. So it's primarily around this area here. So that's what the offset mounting is for. So now I used the offset mounting, so that's the mounting I'm going to show you. So you get these, which are standoffs. What you do is you place them over the back plate like that okay then you get this bracket here you place it in this hole here for the offset mounting so like that what i'm going to do is grab a, a, a magnetic screwdriver place it down like this so what you're going to do is push it down like that and then you screw it that part's done and then what you want to do is grab this bracket here this is the second bracket and for the offset mounting, you're going to want to put it into these holes, the ones toward the bottom of the bracket. So put it like that, down, push it, and then you just screw it down. Now, as for thermal paste, of course, now I use the pre-applied thermal paste that came on the cooler, but I'm just going to add some polymer therm here just to show you how to do the installation. You don't want loads. And then what you want to do is grab the cooler. Now there is only one way. So what you want to do is place it like this. Okay, you want to place it one side like that. And then like that, you want to place one screw. Just want to tighten up one side first. And then tighten up that side. And then what you do, this is just to keep it so it stays in line. 
and then you just screw it down then until it bottoms out now as for the fans what you really want to do is put the clips on each side which one will already have it on place it in the middle like this like that I'm going to put it about there clip one side and that's for one side that's one side done it will just clip in i don't particularly like the clips but that's just me then you want to grab the other fan like this it does fit on your okay just like that i'm gonna go like this and then that's pretty much it done okay so this is an argb connector this is for the lighting so both of the fans will come with an argb and a pwm connector now one of them does have a pigtail you really want to do is just connect this one up like this just like this and then what you do is you're going to take this cable obviously you will have to do the cable management yourself but i'm just showing you how to connect it so you want to make sure that the pins are lined up correctly go like this and then down <laughs> Okay then, so when it comes to the overall test system, it is on my AM5 platform, it's a Ryzen 9 7900, it's got 32 gigs of DDR5 from APSR, it is on an MSI B650 motherboard, it's got an RX7800 XT graphs card, it does also have a 1000 watt co-length power supply, it's in the house in the Be Quiet Shadow Base 800FX, with four... 140 light wing fans okay so when it comes to the room temperature the room temperature before testing was 18 degrees but it did go up to 21 degrees after testing okay so when it comes to the overall testing methods well i run the exact same testing through every single video that's cinebench r23 blender pavilion blender classroom and 3d mark cp test because it hits cpu different in each test now as for 50 percent fan speed the cpu power draw at high was 158 watts with a low at 149 the cpu clocks were high at 5.4 with a low at 5 now as for the cinebench r23 the idles were 31 with a max of 90 the blender pavilion were idles at 31 with a max of 89 blender classrooms idle at 31 with a max of 89 and 3d mark cpu test the idles were 31 with a max of 86 celsius now when it comes to the 100 fan speed the power draw did go up it was a high at 166 watts with a low at 152 the c the cpu clocks didn't change they were actually a 5.4 at high and 5 gigahertz at low as a cinebench r23 the idles are 31 with a max of 87 the blender pavilion was idle at 31 with a max of 87 blender classroom was idle at 31 with a max of 87 and 3d mark cpu test was idle at 31 with a max of 80 D Celsius. So what I'm going to do by you now is actually pull up a graph showing you the how this stacks up against other CPU coolers on the market, like the ones from Noctua, the ones I've done from Thermal Right. There's I'll put another Be Quiet one on here. I'll pull in some Joy Shark ones. I will put other big coolers I've already tested on my AM5 platform to give you guys a good idea of which one is the best one to buy because this cooler is at £45 is it worth it to you well that's gonna obviously come down to you really now i give you all the specifications i give you the overall thermals i give you the overall answers whether you buy them or not a purchasing decision that's up to you 100 percent completely i'm not going to tell you to buy or not to buy that is up to you 100 percent. but where my opinion does come into it i do genuinely like be quite products i think the quality you get in they are on par with noctua as for like high-end cpu coolers or aios they are the you know it's them and noctua them two are the top brands when it comes to like very good quality cpu coolers specifically so 
you take that with what you want. Uh, this one is £47. The RGB version is 42 And then uh, the down version or the basic version, which is a silver version, is £40. Now, yes, that's very competitive, especially with brands like Thermal right out there. But whether you buy that or not, that's up to you. But this does get a recommendation for me because it performs well. It's very, very quiet. And the mountain, it's very straightforward, like I show you through the overall installation. The clips, they're the only thing that really annoys me. I don't like them in general. That's not just because of Be Quiet, it's because of every brand that uses them. The generally, I just don't like them. The cables are okay. But this gets a thumbs up for me, and I think it looks very, very nice as well, lit and up. So whether you would agree with me or not, that's up to you completely. But if you do decide to buy one, then I will be leaving links down below that gives me a kickback. And as always, please do not forget to subscribe, because I've got absolute tons of stuff that has arrived. A full Lee and Lee PC bill. I've got stuff here from Arctic. I've got more stuff from be quiet i have got absolute tons of stuff here for content so make sure you subscribe for that and i hope you guys have a fantastic week and weekend ahead of you this is richard for welsh tech good bye